Have you ever wondered why God rested on the seventh day in Genesis chapter 2? It's a question that invites us into the rich tapestry of this second chapter of Genesis, a chapter brimming with profound truths and divine mysteries. Here we find ourselves journeying back to the dawn of time where we witness the creation of humanity itself. God, in his infinite wisdom and power, crafts the first man from the dust of the earth, breathing life into him. And then, in an act of divine love, he forms the first woman from the man's rib, creating a companion for him. This chapter also introduces us to the Garden of Eden, a paradise of unparalleled beauty established by God as the first home for man and woman. A place of harmony, abundance and divine presence. How intriguing it is to delve into the mysteries of the Bible, isn't it? God's masterpiece, the creation of man and woman, is a remarkable event in Genesis chapter 2. This chapter paints a vivid picture of an omnipotent creator fashioning the pinnacle of his creation, the human being. Imagine the scene. God, in his infinite wisdom and power, reaches down to the earth, gathering a handful of dust. From this simple, humble material, he forms the body of the first man, Adam, but the body alone is lifeless, an empty vessel. It's only when God breathes into this formed dust that this vessel is filled with life, filled with a soul. This breath of God, this divine spark, sets man apart from all other creatures. Yet God realizes that man should not be alone. From the man's side, God crafts the first woman, Eve. This act is rich in symbolism and significance. From the man's rib, a place close to his heart, God creates a partner, a companion for Adam. This signifies the intimate unity and companionship that should exist between man and woman. They're not just mere creatures, they are partners, equals, two halves of a whole. But with this gift of life and companionship comes a responsibility. God gives Adam and Eve instructions about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He warns them not to eat its fruit. This instruction is God's first command to mankind, setting the boundaries of human freedom and divine authority. It's a test of obedience and trust. This beautiful narrative of God's creation of man and woman is not just a story of our origins. It's a story of our purpose, our responsibilities, and our relationship with God and with each other. It's the story of God's love and his desire for a relationship with us. Man and woman created uniquely yet unified set the stage for humanity's journey. The Garden of Eden, a paradise, yet a test ground for the first humans. This lush oasis brimming with life was more than a home for Adam and Eve. It was a symbol of God's benevolence and the abundance of creation. Every tree, every fruit, a testament to divine providence, save for one. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. This tree, towering and tantalizing, held a significance that transcended its botanical beauty. It was a symbol of divine law, of boundaries set by God. A command was given to Adam and Eve, simple yet profound. They were not to eat from this tree. This command, more than a mere dietary restriction, was a test of obedience, of trust, of the capacity to respect divine will. Thus, in this paradise, amidst the verdant splendor, the first test of humanity was planted. The Garden of Eden, a paradise with a grave command, sets the scene for the human story to unfold. Genesis chapter 2, a chapter of creation, companionship and commandments, a chapter that encapsulates the divine act of man's creation, the formation of woman from man's rib, and the establishment of the beautiful Garden of Eden, a paradise where they lived in harmony with nature. This chapter sets the stage for the unfolding narrative of humanity's relationship with God, with nature, and with each other. It introduces the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and God's command to not eat from it, a command that signifies the beginning of human moral consciousness and autonomy. From this analysis, we gain valuable insights into the nature of divine commands, the concept of companionship, the role of nature in human life, and the consequences of disobedience. It compels us to ponder, to question, and to seek understanding. Genesis chapter 2, a profound chapter that sets the foundation for humanity's relationship with God, with nature, and with each other. A chapter that compels us to ponder, to question, and to seek understanding.